Hello and a very warm welcome to our daily service. It's been lovely to think of people all over the world, in fact, watching these daily services. But no matter where you are, we all have something in common if we know and love the Lord Jesus. Our true home is not scattered around England or Scotland or Singapore or Australia or wherever you're watching from. Our true home is with God in heaven. The psalmist, Psalm 84, delights in his home with God. And we're going to start with some words from Psalm 84. Let's say these words together. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Loving Father, it is indeed an amazing blessing to dwell with you in your house. We thank you that by the Holy Spirit in Christ we are, as it were, already in your presence, spiritually speaking. And we thank you for the perfect fulfilment of this promise in the age to come. Help us to live day by day, and especially this day, in the light of these realities. For Jesus' sake. Amen. This week we're looking at some words in 2 Samuel chapter 7, and you may remember that the focus is on God's living arrangements. That David feels bad that he's got a lovely palace to live in, but God doesn't have a permanent home. And God, through the prophet Nathan, speaks to David. So some words from 2 Samuel chapter 7. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. My father instilled in me a love of Welsh rugby. Dad was a passionate supporter of Wales. And so in the early 70s, when the Welsh team was all conquering, one of my great heroes was a man called Carwin James. Carwin James was the coach of the Welsh team and also the British Lions, who won against the almighty All Blacks in the early 1970s. And so it was very exciting for a little six-year-old, I guess I was, to hear that Carwin James was going to come and stay in our house. What a privilege. But that's nothing. Absolutely nothing compared to the privilege we can all have. Because God says that the God who made us wants to live with us. In Genesis chapter 2, we find an account of the world exactly as it was designed to be. And we find human beings, Adam and Eve, living in God's presence in the Garden of Eden. But then things go badly wrong. They disobey God. They're banished from his presence. And so there's a separation between God and human beings. And yet God in his amazing love wants to put things right. Wants to restore human beings to relationship with himself. And so he calls a people. The people of Israel, Abraham's descendants, and he lives with them. At first in a tabernacle, a tent that travelled with them through the wilderness. And then entered the promised land with them. And here we have David saying, okay, th th these days, now that we're settled in the land, it's inappropriate, God, for you to live in a tent anymore. You need a permanent house, a temple. And God responds and says to David, no, you're not going to build a house for me. I'm going to build a house for you. He meant a dynasty, a family line. And sure enough, there is a family line, a dynasty that comes from David. But, says God, your son will build a house for me. We're wondering who that son is. And as we read on in the story, we find that Solomon, the son of David, does indeed build a magnificent temple in which God lives and his glory descends and comes into the temple. But a prophecy is only fulfilled when it's filled full. 
And what Nathan, the prophet, is saying in the name of God here is not fully fulfilled at the time of Solomon. That magnificent temple that Solomon built was just a model. It pointed beyond itself to something even more amazing. God says through Nathan, I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. There's going to be another son of David who, unlike Solomon, won't die. This son of David will live forever. And he is the one who will establish a dwelling place for God, where God can live amongst his people. And that future king, of course, who lives forever, is the Lord Jesus Christ of the line of David, who made it possible through his death on the cross for sinful people to be forgiven, to be made holy in his sight, that we might be at home with God. And the moment we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us. And the Apostle Paul writes, In him you are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. So there are no physical temples here on earth where we can go and meet God. No holy places, just holy people, made holy by the blood of Jesus and by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And so the church is the temple of God now. God lives in us. And we look forward to the final fulfillment of these promises when Jesus comes again. And when he comes, he'll establish a perfect new creation of which Eden was just a pale reflection, if you like. A perfect new heavens and a new earth. And John, in the book of Revelation, describes a vision he has of that amazing future. And he says, I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Well, there's no temple in the new creation, because the whole thing is a temple. Just as there was no temple in the Garden of Eden. God was everywhere. And that is the ultimate promise, uh, fulfilment of the promise in 2 Samuel chapter 7. One day we'll live in the new creation, in the presence of God perfectly. What a great hope we have. And in the meantime, let's delight in the fact that God lives in us by his spirit. These are great truths. And so with joy, let's together declare our faith in God in the words of this creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray, and we'll begin by saying together a prayer of thanksgiving. Our loving Heavenly Father, Accept our grateful thanks for all you have given us so richly to enjoy. For health of mind and body when many are sick and afflicted. For homes, loved ones and friendship when many are lonely and desolate. For food and clothing when many starve and go in rags. For security and hope when many are anxious and in despair. And above all for your redeeming love for forgiving us in Christ, making your home in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, and giving us the certain hope of being in your presence forever in the new creation. Help us to show our gratitude by using our lives in your service and in the service of others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for leaders. We remember before you, O God, those who bear rule among us in church and state, in industry and commerce, 
those in the media, and all who have power over the lives of others. Grant them the humility to seek your guidance, and the courage to do your will, so that our people may be led to the knowledge of you, and to the service of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the midst of all the uncertainties of the world, it's wonderful to know that the ultimate ruler is Almighty God. We'll sing a hymn of praise, O worship the King, all glorious above. I hope you've been encouraged by what we've been reminded of today, that the King of the universe has made his home with us through Christ and by the Spirit, and we're on our way to an eternal home with him. May that encourage you, and let's end our time together by saying the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.